Get an IB psychologist. Perhaps one of the toughest things in the IB psychology course is in, uh, interpreting your inferential test results. Now, I highly recommend doing your test on an online calculator, unless, of course, your teacher is going to guide you uh, and show you how to do it by hand. I recommend the social science statistics calculator. I'll put a link in the description. This, I find, is more straightforward and easier user-friendly than the VASA stats. VASA stats, there's a few things that can go wrong there, which I feel like is a bit of an issue. Now, with the social science calculator, I'll just point out, be careful, it is a, uh, the default is a two-tailed test. And in a separate video, I'll explain uh, if you should do a one-tailed or a two-tailed. But I'm almost certain you're going to be doing a one-tailed test. So just be careful to select the right one. Now, what you, the reason you are uh, conducting your inferential test is to see, are your results significant, yes or no? If your results are not statistically significant, you're going to retain your null hypothesis, right? There's no effect between your IV and your DV. If your results are statistically significant, then you are going to reject the null. Now, there are two ways that you can figure out uh, and interpret your results to see, are your results significant? What I'm looking for in my own students, not when I'm marking for the, for the IV, but when I'm... Um, marking my own students in class, I want to see and make sure that they understand what they've written, that they know why they have uh, retained or rejected their null hypothesis. They understand how did, the, how did the values that they calculated lead them to their conclusions. And I can tell really easily when a student's written a summary of their man Whitney you or their Wilcoxon test, and they don't know what the numbers mean. It's so easy to tell. So I want to show you how you can interpret those results so that it's clear you understand what they mean. Now, the first way to interpret your results to see if they're significant is to look at your p-value. Now, the p-value is different to the probability value. The probability value we set at 0 0.05, right? The p-value is what you calculate. So I like the social science uh, statistics calculator. It gives me one p-value. Now, my results are statistically significant, right? I reject my null hypothesis if my p-value is less than 0 0.05. Now, I would expect, I want to see students show me that and explain that in one or two sentences in their, um, in their summary of their report, right? Our p-value was this. It was higher than 0 0.05, therefore. Or our p-value was this. It was lower than 0 0.05, therefore. And they link that to the hypothesis. That's the first way you can interpret your inferential stat results. The second way is to look at your calculated value. Now, if you're doing the Mann-Whitney U test, this is going to be your U value. If you're doing the Wilcoxon test, this will be your W value. I'll just focus on these two for now because they're the most common if you're doing chi-squared. It's going to be a little bit different. Now, what you have to look at is your calculated value, either U or W, in relation to the critical value. Now, you find the critical value if you use the social science statistic calculator, it gives you the critical value, or you can use some online tables. The IB has a great website that gives you the critical value table so you can see what is the critical value based on your sample size. So the second way to see if your results are statistically significant, right, and to see which hypotheses you'll retain, is to look at your U value or your W value, depending on which test, in relation to the critical value. If your calculated value is equal to or less than the critical value, you have statistically significant results, right? Therefore, you reject the null hypothesis. If these values are larger than the critical value, then you will retain the null hypothesis. Now, if you are using the VASA stats, they will give you um, two values, and it's to do if the numbers fall in between those values, then your results are insignificant. It, it, it becomes a little bit more confusing to interpret. It's not that hard. It explains it how to do it on the test. But actually, I just find the social science statistics calculator that much more straightforward. Okay, at this level of the course, I think that's enough. Uh, that's all we need to know. There's a whole rabbit holes of inferential statistics we can go down, like. Are they even relevant? Should we even use them in psychology? Um, but we don't need to get into that. All right, there we have it. Really simple. The two ways that you can interpret your results to see if they're significant. Based on your p-value, is it equal to or less than the probability value of 0.05? And based on your calculated value, is it equal to or less than the critical value? I expect to see my students showing that they know that um, why they uh, accepted, uh, rejected, or, or retained their null hypothesis based on these relationships, okay? And hopefully that makes sense. Cheers, good luck.